There's this age-old debate, what's faster, Final Cut Pro that's now on version 11 as of last night, or DaVinci Resolve 19.1 that just came out this week as well? I don't know, but I'm really curious because there's a lot that goes into being a productive and efficient video editor. However, one quick simple thing we can test today is how long does it take to actually export 15 minutes of video that's mixed 4K, 6K, 8K, drone, Sony, RED, GoPro footage all on a 4K timeline. And I'll use my brand new Apple M4 Mini looking at the same network storage. If you're as curious as I am, let's see what happens. I'm gonna start over here on my Mac Mini. I'm actually working on this through Jump Desktop to my M Studio, if you're curious, recording with OBS. But the Mac Mini I'm working with, if I go to here, it's the baseline. It's the one with 16 gigs of RAM. It has only the 256 internal storage running Sequoia 15.1. Now, the reason I got the 256 gigs of RAM thing is because I actually did get the upgrade to the 10 gig Ethernet card. So if I run the Blackmagic disk speed test and I point this to my network storage where all the media is and where I work from, I call it my, my edit box which is this storage right here. If I point it to there and run a quick speed test on it, you'll see I'm getting really decent 10 gig speeds over the ethernet cable and I can have 100 terabytes of storage. So I'm not concerned about storage on the individual machines. I cache to external SSDs and I actually work for media from a, a Synology server. So now that we got that out of the way, I will point out this is Final Cut Pro 11 and I tried this going from DaVinci Resolve to Final Cut Pro with XML files, and I could not get things to work with Sequoia. I don't know if it's Resolve or Final Cut Pro. It didn't work that way. So instead, what I want to do is I'm going to start with a timeline in Final Cut Pro with the media, send it to Resolve, and we'll see what happens from there. So the footage I'm going to be pulling in is actually coming from a Resolve Archive file. Resolve Archives can actually store the raw footage in them. They're really nice. It's like they're pre-linked. And it has like 38 gigs or so of footage. It's just raw source material. So some of it's raw, some of it's just camera original media. And in Final Cut Pro, I'm not a big Final Cut Pro expert, but I know a little bit about it for sure. If you go to settings, there's the import tab where it says leave files in place. The default is to copy the footage into this library file. Uh, I don't want to do that because it's making a separate copy of the footage. So I'll say leave files in place. And the other thing that is really important to do when you want to send XML from Final Cut to Resolve is for you to use the import uh, window. That's this button right here. So import media or import media from a device. This actually will sort of create a rewrapped QuickTime that gives you some time code, and that's going to be needed for the the transfer XML file. Right. So from within here, let me navigate to my network storage at a box, that's my network storage, and then I'm gonna navigate all the way into this. Let's see, projects, we'll go to creative video tips, and today's tutorial is gonna be down here towards the bottom, and we're gonna be looking inside of the raw folder and inside this archive file, and we'll click on into here, and my hope is that I can just select all of this footage, say leave in place, and it will get the footage, which is inside folders with inside folders. And it tells me this uh, issue here. Oh, it's because I got B-Raw in here and I've got Red plugin not installed. I just downloaded the Red Apple workflow installer for Final Cut Pro and we'll see if this solves our issue of not being able to see Red files in Final Cut Pro 11. And let's just put these directly onto a timeline or they call them projects here in Final Cut Pro. So if I just take this and drag it down here, what happens? It doesn't do anything. I might need to say new project. All right, I'm showing my, my newbiness here to it. So I'm gonna call this, um, we'll call this FCP to resolve. And that gives us a timeline. And now if I wanna get these onto a timeline, should be able to just drag them down, sure enough. They're all down there. All right, so I got all the footage down on a timeline. I don't have Blackmagic Raw on here but we do at least have some red raw that's 6k on here i've got some 8k from the canon r5 i've got gopro gopro is notoriously really hard to play back as well as drone footage and some sony stuff from an fx3 a little bit of everything the timeline itself is set to 3840 by 2160 and let's export this thing so if I want to just export, one way you can do that in Final Cut Pro is there's, in the upper right, there's this little share sheet button like it has on all their apps. 
just say export file and the settings I'm going to use for this 3840 by 2160 video codec. I don't want to do this ProRes because that's like cheating. I want to actually make this machine work and instead we're going to choose H.264 because that's what you normally do for like a YouTube upload. You know, you need something small and let's see how long this takes. So I'll choose H.264. It's estimating right now it's going to be a 6 gig file. That's fine. I'm going to hit uh, next. It should ask me where I want to put it. It does. And I'm going to put this on the same shared storage that the footage actually lives. So it's all inside this, this raw folder here. I'm going to export this in this work in progress folder. We'll make a new folder called FCP so we can know that that one came out of FCP. And I don't know if it saves my time on this. So what I'm going to do is open up my stopwatch, trusty stopwatch on my phone over here. And as soon as I hit save, I will start this in case it doesn't give me a duration on the export time. All right, so I've got the timer is running. I hit save. Um, there should be some sort of a progress indicator. Oh, it's up here. Up in the upper right, there's background tasks. So it is transcoding and exporting right now, and we'll see how long this ends up taking. One of the cool things I do think Final Cut Pro has over Resolve is the idea that it can be exporting this video out now and I can still go and work in the software. Uh, Resolve does have that, but you need to have a couple machines and have your studio licensed on both. It's called remote rendering. If you want to learn about that more, uh, I've been thinking about making a tutorial on it. So let me know down below if that's something that would be of use to you if you have multiple computers, because you can use one computer just to do the rendering while you keep working. Uh, as if you need to export long timelines, that could be really helpful. One more interesting thing to note while this is rendering and speeding up is I'm keeping an eye, I have iStat menus on this to see how much memory is the system using right now, how much CPU, so I can have a little bit of a comparison. It seems like it's using you know, a pretty good amount of the memory. There's not a lot of pressure. And then again, this is the base model M4 Mini with the 256 internal hard drive. Now, this might seem like a really silly test to figure out which editing software can export a video faster because so much goes into actually editing that this is just one part of the workflow. But a lot of times you do have a really long presentation that you just need to turn around quickly and get the best quality export out of it. Maybe it's a, some sort of a presentation at a conference, it could be like a church sermon, any sort of long presentation, which one's going to get it done faster? I'm hoping this will shed some light into that. Nothing says you love editing more than testing export speeds from Final Cut Pro while drinking out of an Avid mug only to go work back in DaVinci Resolve. All right, we're done. It is 9 minutes and 58 seconds is what I got here. So 9 minutes, 58 seconds. I'm going to just trust that this video file looks and sounds good. Um, Apple makes great video encoders. If we take a look... This ended up being um, a data rate of about 60 megabits per second. It's pretty high. I don't think Resolve's default takes it quite that high. So this might be a little bit better quality. But as far as encoding times, um, it's basically doing the same thing. And it's using the default master export settings here. So let's head over to DaVinci Resolve now and see how long it takes to get this same timeline exported. Um, I do not want rendering. Um, this is an option that you probably want to disable if you don't want to have your hard drive, especially mine, uh, filling up. So that's rendering background render. I'm going to disable that because my Mac Mini has 256 gigs of internal storage, and I don't want that filling up. Let's go to File and Export XML. And from here, let's go in and uh, export this out. So I'm going to go to Share, Backup, FCP XML, and there's the current version is 113. Um, I don't know that DaVinci Resolve supports this newest version, so I'm going to choose the oldest one here, uh, 1.11, and just hit save. Now we've got an XML file out of here. I'm going to close Final Cut Pro, and let's open up good old DaVinci Resolve and load this exact same timeline in over here. So I've got DaVinci Resolve 19.1 loaded. Uh, let's just create a brand new project. We'll go to the Edit tab over here. We'll go File, Import, Timeline. And Import Timeline and will let us choose the XML format that we just exported from Final Cut Pro to get the same timeline, or it should at least. Let's find out. Backup, Final Cut Pro XML. Choose the XML, say Import. And we have got different options here, but basically I'm just going to say, I don't normally do this, but I am going to say automatically import clips into the media pool. 
and that should hopefully do things for us. Um, it says it hasn't found three of the clips. We're going to hit no. <laughs> okay. Um, we have some errors here. It says no overlapping time code for certain clips. And a lot of this has to do with not having time code for certain clips. And so I'm just going to manually conform these instead. Um, I know that this is going to be clip 104, which is this one right here from the Sony camera. If I right click on it, I can say conform lock with media pool clip. And I'll just do that here for these others as well. Anytime you have issues when you go between applications, this will almost always happen on some clips, especially if you use stock or you don't have footage that retains like source time code across the board. But this should give us um, the exact same timeline otherwise. So let's see how long this thing takes to render out. I'm going to first do one really important thing and that's make sure my timeline settings is set to 4K. So that's not doing a downscaling and then an upscaling afterwards. And that's always done on the timeline itself. So if I go to timelines, timeline settings, you can uncheck use project settings. So you can actually work a timeline normally at 1080 and increase this here. This was already set to 38, 40 by 21, 60, because that's what Final Cut Pro sent over. So we'll just leave that as is. And we'll come up here to the quick export menu, which is kind of like the share sheet thing that Final Cut Pro has. And we'll choose H.264 master. It's probably a lower bit rate than Final Cut Pro does, but it gives us the same kind of test. And I'm going to load up my, and we'll hit export, and it'll ask us where do we want to save it. I'm going to go over here and say shared, and we'll go work in progress, post, and we'll go resolve. I tested something else earlier. That's what that was. We don't need to worry about that. I'm going to reset my timer, and as soon as I hit save, um, we've got the timer counting down and we'll see how long this takes. So this has, again, it's uh, 13 minutes and 13 seconds of footage. Um, it looks like it's going at 61 FPS and the timer's running and we'll see. Um, the other one ended up taking nine minutes and 58 seconds. So that's what Resolve has to beat. Um, up here, we can get an idea of what's happening with our memory, our SSD, um, but this is all going from footage that lives on a server storage over the 10 gig ethernet back out over that same 10 gig ethernet to the Synology NAS. The fun thing about this is it's not going to change how I edit and it's probably not going to change how you should probably edit, but I think it's a nice thing to know which one can kick out a timeline with mixed media a lot faster. Interesting now I'm noting as we're getting towards later in the timeline where it's rendering, um, if I take a look at the CPU, it has really kicked in now. So we're looking at 91% on the performance core usage. So that's probably either on the red footage or it's on the 8K Canon footage, which is like this overhead Rubik's Cube stuff that's going on there. So we're down to 40 seconds left. And I'm seeing 6 minutes, 20 seconds left on my timer that I'm running here on my phone. I'll tell you what's crazy is the machine that's editing and encoding all this footage cost half as much as this phone cost. <laughs> like, that's a serious machine for half the price of a phone. Um, it just blows my mind. I remember when I was a kid on Sunday, Sunday mornings, I would always be like looking at the, the CompUSA, Best Buy, uh, Circuit City ads for what the latest new computer is. And the fact that you can buy a machine like this for 600 bucks and continue to create with these applications that have software that can edit like Hollywood movies for 300 bucks is insane to me. All right, we're coming up towards the end. I want to make sure I stop this and I'm in fair to get the uh, the same, see what the time is on the same timeline between the two apps. And we are da, 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 four seconds left. I think it takes a second to close the file out at the end. And done, All right. Seven minutes and 26 seconds is what I got. So 726, go back over here to my little note. And well, you know what? Apple, you make great hardware, but I think Blackmagic Design might have you beat as far as encoding and how to deal with video files a little bit better. Um, I also didn't have to install the, the red plugin at the beginning, which was nice. Resolve just handles pretty much any footage natively. Um, but I'm looking at a, about a two minute difference here. 
And this is the one we exported. It's 2.9 gigabytes in file size, which means it probably had a lower database, data, and it did 30 megabits per second instead of, uh, I think the other one was about 60 for Final Cut Pro's export. And it did it in a couple minutes less time. But really, it's getting used to your software. What do you like about the software that makes it fun to use? And are you experiencing it? Can you easily make it do what you want it to do? Can you think something in your head and have it happen with your hands quickly? And that's why I have this channel here called Creative Video Tips where I love teaching DaVinci Resolve because I think it's the coolest thing since sliced bread. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.